Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the November 20th, 2007 meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority being called to order at 2.33 p.m. Do we have a roll call? Authority members, Raymond. Here. Mincy. Here. Najarian. Here. Frazian. Here. Quintero. Here. Yousefian. Here. Chairman Weaver. Here. Ms. Kazakian, is my green button on there? Yes, it is. Is the lights out up here? Just make sure to take care of that. Okay, what is next, please? All right, maybe we have your report. The agenda for the November 20th, 2007 regular meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, November 15, 2007 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. And next, please. Next is approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve them? So moved. Second. No. Second. I would like Wait. to make, um, first of all, abstain. Um, Mr. Weaver and I were gone. But the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, it shows that we voted no on two different measures. I'm sure that's supposed to be absent and not no's. So I'd like to correct that. Le telepathy. <laughs> oh, my telepathy. Make those corrections. With those <coughs> changes noted and the two abstentions, Minister and approved as as revised. What is next, please? Next is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the Housing Authority may question or um, answer a response to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff through the executive director for an investigation and a report. Thank you. I have one card. Good. Milano. Good afternoon, members of the Housing Authority and city staff. My name is Herbert Molano. I'm, I'm directing my comments to uh, uh, Mayor Najarian, especially uh, today, because I think it's in February that you'll be giving a, your first state of the city. And from my experience in the previous states of the city that I've attended by, as conducted by the, uh, cha uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the usual topics brought up during, those, during that uh, those festivities are are primarily geared towards how well we've done uh, in the city concerning development. The uh, that has usually been the theme because I, you know, the majority of the members of the Chamber of Commerce are also members of the Glendale Association of Realtors, so they kind of like get to vote twice, right? As realtors as well and as members of the chamber, when it comes to the uh, their influence on issues having to do with the city. And I know that uh, I can forecast what you will be saying. You know, the, you'll be talking about the Americana, which will be, you know, opening up in April. You'll be talking about the new housing units that are coming up. You will be talking about all the outreach that you are doing to, you know, developers, you know, around California and outside California. You'll probably be talking about the Disney project coming up. And I think for the first time, you'll probably be talking about the new parkland and the monies that are being allocated now to take care of these issues in South Glendale. And I think that's, that's going to be different. Um, but I think that's the overall theme, I think, that you'll probably be carrying. Um, I know that you will not be talking about the increased payroll. You will not be talking about how traffic has slowed down throughout Glendale. You will not be talking about families at risk. And overall, we're probably not going to see too much with regard to the social state of the city because the negative side is generally, the issues that are negative generally are not brought forward. It's a, it's a feel-good report generally that is presented. And what I like to see is a little bit more openness and transparency with regard to the challenges that the city really faces. And I would love to see something along the lines of the social state of the city, something that gives us a clear, honest, and brutal assessment as to where we really are. Because, Mr. Najarian, if you get an opportunity for another, you know, political position, you decide to run for something bigger and greater than Glendale, you know, somebody else will be coming in your place, and hopefully they'll receive and look at this state of the city and say, look, these are the challenges that we face. These are the kinds of topics that I used to talk to frequently uh, when, uh, uh, when Mr. Draymond was thinking of running for office you know, about the social challenges that the city faces and the opportunities that we have to significantly do something concerning youth at risk and families at risk because at the end of the day, you know, we have to pay it one way or the other, whether it be by paying taxes, additional taxes for prisons or courts or more police. 
And I think this city is in an exceptional position to really do something about creating something solid with regard to objectives to reduce the problems with youth. And it is my hope that you take on that endeavor to give us, for the first time, a true report of the state of the city that we can be proud of. You know, it's, uh, I know that you need to attend to all the developers who are interested in doing business in Glendale, but there is this other side that we really need to put forth. You know, when I looked at the income of the city, I found something really interesting between 2005 and 2006. The property tax revenues between in that year went up by 10.2 million. And the payroll for the general fund went up by 10.2 million. So whatever money is coming out of the property tax <coughs> goes to payroll first. And then whatever is left over, maybe the community gets. Take a look at those numbers. Because I've been looking at the budget and at the payroll from 2001. And I'm concerned. When do the needs of the community come in? And I think, you know, and I, and I know that you have those concerns, because those are the things that you mentioned to me before you ran for office or as you were running for office. And it is my hope that the City Council will renew its interest in really taking a look at doing something significant and creating a, a strategic plan towards the social problems that the city faces. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, since uh, Mr. Milano has written your speech, does that mean we don't have to go to the luncheon? Very good. We're going to sell you uh, two tickets just for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't know what you're going to say, but I seldom in my lifetime remember hearing a State of the Union, a State of the State, or the State of the City that wasn't done in a positive note of where they've been. Maybe sometimes talking about challenges in general, but not getting down to nitty-gritty. So I don't know what you're going to do, but I'll be surprised. I'll buy a ticket and be there, and I won't fall asleep, I, I promise. Um, <laughs> if I may, briefly. Yes. <clears throat> you already written it? I think I am going to talk about the courageous efforts and the historic efforts that this council, redevelopment agency, and housing authority has taken in terms of obtaining tax increment financing, in terms of uh, developing park impact fees, in terms of being committed to creating low-income housing wherever possible, and we have some of those issues before us today. Yeah, there's a lot of icing on the cake with uh, Americana and Disney, but I have nothing to be ashamed of. I don't think any of the council or authority members do in terms of the social, the efforts that we've made towards the social causes and to improve the quality of life for uh, everyone in Glendale, including those less fortunate. That's a that's a brief preview. Oh, good. Sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds interesting. Okay. With that, oral communications closed. What is next, please? On the business agenda at 6A is Director of Community Development and Housing regarding proposed development of an affordable multifamily rental housing project located at 3673 San Fernando Road. At 6A1 is resolution authorizing a land acquisition loan from the Housing Authority to Glendale City Lights, a California Limited Partnership. Mr. Mincy? I'd like to move 6A1. Second. Do my colleagues need a report or ready for the vote? I do. I would like to say one thing on this, though. Say one it, thing. Again, this is <clears throat> right near a transportation center, and it's providing income for or low income for families where they can take the train or bus, and is right along our d desires. Plus, the design is good and close to our new park. Right. That's right. And school. That's good. Okay. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Authority members, Raymond? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Frazian? Yes. Montero? Yes. Yousefian? Aye. Chairman Weaver? <clears throat> what is next, please? Is there any authority member or staff comments? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Stand adjourned to 43 p.m. Thank you for your report, Mr. Novak. That's right. Good afternoon, and welcome to the November 20th meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. We are at uh, about 3.40, excuse me, 2.48 p.m. 
Uh, Mr. City Attorney, City Clerk, if we could have the roll, please. Um, 244 p.m. 244. Well, which watch would you like to use? <laughs> the one in the council chairs, chambers? Yeah. Chair's prerogative. <laughs> okay, well, I can't see that far, so I'm Just using the one attached to my wrist, right. uh, Mr. Kasek. Yeah. Um, agency members, Najarian. Here. Montero. Here. Weaver. Here. Yusefian. Here. Chairman Draymond. Here. Uh, may I have your uh, report, please? The agenda for the November 20th, 2007 regular meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, November 15, 2007, on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What do you have next, please? Minutes. So moved. Second. I will abstain. Okay. We have minutes moved, seconded, and an abstention from Mr. Weaver. Minutes are approved. Next, please. Next is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the redevelopment agency may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff through the executive director for investigation and report. Thank you. Nothing. Uh, we uh, do have one speaker card. Let's see. Who could that be? It's Mr. Milano, but I don't know if he's still in the house. Oh, yes, there he is. Mr. Milano, happy Thanksgiving to you as you walk up to the uh, podium. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair Draymond. Uh, my name is Herbert Milano, uh, members of the Redevelopment Agency. Well, I figured that since there was nothing in your agenda, I could come over and take 100% of your attention with regard to the issue of the parkland. First of all, I... Uh, I want to thank the agency for, for its leadership in addressing the, um, the tax increment funding, and especially for Mr. Quintero for you know, promoting that and, and, and also for the parked impact fees. Um, of course, I have opinions with regard to how the impact fees are being implemented and when that money will eventually trickle down. As I imagine, it's going to be trickled down, and I don't know when we'll receive that money. <laughs> but I want to at least address something that, I, that you've heard me speak about before and both here in, at this podium and personally. And that's with regard to the opportunity now we, that we now have with Central Park. Um, I was looking at the, at the plans for Central Park and I tried to estimate how much of that parkland was still pretty much used for parking and additional structures and how much parkland is left for either promenades or, or green space. And it's only about a third of it or less that is truly being used for the green open space. The rest of it is still pretty much utilized for parking. And it is an incredible shame because we already own the land. And so that whatever funds may be coming forth to develop parkland, this is possibly the most ideal place to really ex do the park expansion that we need. Now, I know that... All of you have already pretty much made up your minds with regard to the, uh, to the Adult Recreation Center. But we haven't broken ground on the Adult Recreation Center, which means that there's still that opportunity to look for ways to expand the green space and truly create both a civic, cultural, recreational place. Not a place for active sports, you know, tennis or baseball or anything, but as a true cultural place. And, and I like to... Um, you know, address Mr. Draymond because we've, you know, we sat down many times and, and looked at the potentials, you know, and, and now that you're, you know, sitting in this agency and, and chairing it now, that to have some type of direction to really create something that is going to outlive both of us, you know, something that somewhere 20, 30 years from now, someone says, you know, someone did have, you know, a vision for a cultural civic place that is truly exceptional. You know, I have never complained about the Americana with regard to its architecture or its commercial value. You know, but to, not to have a civic place for the city that it truly segues completely with regard to the overall city planning. Sometimes when I look at the city planners, I wonder, my God, all of those years of education, first getting their bachelor's, getting their master's, and all of the vision of, that they might have had with regard to how do you create a city that is truly viable, that is truly representative of, of what the city is. And this city needs to expand its cultural venues. 
if anything, with this, the one thing that is the most efficient, and as you know, especially in the Armenian community, such a tremendous number of families and kids in the arts, in music, in the performing arts. It's just an amazing number. And for us not to take that land and truly create something significant that we can invite people from all over Southern California to say, look at this venue, you know, open air concerts. Mr. Weaver, for a long time, I, I know was a, a, a fan of having the 4th of July concerts out in the open that we used to have at Glendale High. You know, imagine having a 4th of July celebration right in the middle of town as a truly integrated place where everyone can come in, sit in the lawn, look at a stage, and watch the 4th of July celebration. It's amazing. What are we doing now? We go into La Crescenta, you know, sit in a parking lot and watch the celebration. I think that you have a, a, an opportunity to create a legacy that is truly unique. Take a look at that. Take a look at that land to do something truly significant. Look, I don't live in Glendale anymore, but still my heart's here. You know, my kids went through school here, and all these opportunities of creating something significant, you have it right there. You have the funding, you have the land. Now we just need people with imagination to create something truly unique. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Milano. What's next, please? Is there any agency member or staff comments? I don't see anybody jumping up and down, Mr. Kasakian, so that's a second. Second. Okay. We are adjourned. Okay, now the closer. For the city council? Certainly. Council members, Draymond? Here. Montero? Here. Weaver? Here. Yusefian? Here. Mayor Nigeria. Here. We read the closed session items. A 1A for closed session is public employment, attorneys, and at 1B is conference with legal counsel pending litigation, one case, Conquest Student Housing, Milano et al. versus City of Glendale, appellate case number B203243. Mr. Garcia, do Mr. you Mayor. anticipate reporting out on any of these items? Mr. Mayor, we do anticipate reporting out on item 1A. On 1A. Thank you. Uh, council, I have no cards. Council will then recess to close session.